Let's talk about the idea of extensibility. That is, will the markup allow you to create new tags? It's a very simple concept. Will the markup allow you to create new tags? And if the answer is yes, then it's extensible. If the answer is no, then it's non-extensible. HTML is a non-extensible format. HTML has one set of tags. That's the tags you get. That's the tags they are. And you'll never get, you'll never get more tags until they invent another version of HTML. XML, on the other hand, the X stands for extensible. And the idea of XML is you create tags as you need them. There is no XML tag. There's no such thing as a, a, as a standard XML tag. You create the standards. Now, people group together and they all say, hey, let's use this set of tags. Let's create the standard. But that doesn't make it a standard XML tag. That makes it a standard, say, math markup language tag or healthcare markup tag. It doesn't make it a standard XML tag. You invent the tags. And you may be a consortium of people, or you may be an individual, or you may be this class. But you are, in, you are responsible for creating the tags. Now, as usual, there's pluses and minuses with that. In HTML, because there's only one set of tags, you can have a standard interpreter. The browser is a standard interpreter. That browser reads those standard HTML tags, and it knows what they all are, and it knows what to do with each one of them. It knows how to render them. And in fact, we have CSS now that allows you to, that allows you to change the rendering of those tags. But that's also part of the, of the HTML standard. There's a standard way that you create a tag. There's a standard way that you modify the look and feel of a tag. And even when you create completely custom looks and feels, you're still doing it using standard tags. Like, for example, a div tag or a span tag. Those are exa that's an example of a tag that's there specifically to flag something that you want to custom format. So when you have a, when you have a non-extensible markup language, like for example, is also in word processors, where processors have a non-extensible markup language, and they are the interpreters as well. When you open a file in Microsoft Word, it reads the Microsoft Word non-extensible format and does the right thing on the screen. When you open an HTML file inside a browser, the browser does the same thing. It reads the non-extensible HTML format, and it does the right thing depending on what tag you've put in. And it already knows what tags are possible. In the XML world, on the other hand, any tag is possible, and so there is no standard browser either. That's why there's no browser for XML, because there's no standard tags. You don't know beforehand what to do with a tag because it's called uh, student. You know, there's no standard thing to do with a student tag. You have to specify what to do with the student tag. Now, we'll talk later in the course about the tools that we have for saying, if it's a student tag, then do this with it. You know, um, put it in a table, or if it's a student tag, uh, put the student's name indented under it or whatever. You're, you have to write the rules of what to do with the tags. You get the, you get the ability to invent tags, but you, with that comes the responsibility to create an interpreter for those tags that figures out what to do with each tag. Now, that's why it's something that we want. That's not a detriment as far as we're concerned. We want that openness. We want that ability to structure our information to our specific specifications and then render it in a, in a variety of ways depending on the need and to have complete control over that. That's the responsibility and the power that comes with an extensible markup language.